This is the Firefly S5 Wi-Fi Sport DV camera. So what do you get in the box? The camera, a lens cap, the battery, USB charging lead, the manual, and as it's designed primarily for the FPV model flying and quadcopter market, FPV lead so that you can use it with quadcopters and model aircraft for FPV flying. Right, installation of the battery, dead easy. Get hold of the battery. It's got three little slots in there and three little tabs there that obviously have to mate. Push it in firmly but gently. Put the lid back on. The battery is um, the same battery that's used in the GoPro 3 and 3 Plus, so easy to get hold of. Manual is very good, it's in Chinese and in English and is pretty thorough and well written. Well it's described as a sport action camera but in fact it doesn't come with any waterproof accessories or ways that you can mount it if you wanted to use it for some of the things that they actually show on the website such as surfing, flying, whatever. So if you did want to use it in that situation you'd have to use something like um, an SJ7000 mount. This is one for the SJ7000 that I got the other week. Clips in nicely and I clip that onto my chin guard of my paragliding helmet. Or you can use it while it's in the SJ7000 case. The shutter release actually mates with the right place on the top. Control functions, dead easy, on off, three second push on the button on the front, shutter release button here, buttons for scrolling through the menu, SD card, micro SD card goes in here, class 10 or above, up to 64 gig, two little sockets there, one for HDMI and one for the USB charging lead and the FPV lead. And as you will notice, on the front here, there's a little screen OLED which tells you what functions you've got set and so on. Right, to turn it on, press and hold three seconds. And it's got a little image of a video camera there which shows you that it's actually in video mode. And it's telling me that I'm in 1080, 30 frames a second, battery life is full card is empty, time date and that I'm in the large setting or the wide setting for the lens because it's actually you can set it as large, middle and narrow. Press the shutter button and as you can see it's flashing blue which is showing me that I'm recording and flashing blue on the front which is very convenient. Um, when I was paragliding with it yesterday and I had it mounted on my chin it doesn't turn off when it's in standby mode so I was able actually to turn it on and off while I was flying and easily see whether or not it was recording. It's got a host of functions um, I shall list them below but functions include 1080 at 30 frames a second, 720 at 30 frames a second and 60 frames a second or in WGVA mode 120 frames a second. It will do time-lapse, cyclic recording, so you could use it in a car. You can also set it to turn on when the USB power is attached, so you could use it as a car cam. It has a thing called fast image capture technology, so it will take 11 photographs in one second, which could be very interesting to play with. It's a 120 degree wide angle lens, and this camera actually features the Sony 12 megapixel backlit CMOS sensor, so potentially is capable of some very good video. Right, stop it recording, quick press of the shutter button and to turn it off, three second push and it's turned off. Right, let's take a scroll through the menu. Now this is achieved by using the button on the front, button on the top and the scrolling buttons on the end of the case. This is the little 
OLED display screen and you can see at the moment it says I'm in 1080p 30 frames a second battery is three quarters and I'm in the wide setting for the lens if I give this button on the side a press I'm, I'm into tools give it another press size which scrolls you through the video options go back on that again another press on the top time lapse you can scroll through the periods cyclic recording on or off that is if you want to use it as a car cam auto start when plugged in or not wide dynamic range on or off this is apparently for use when conditions are quite dark or cloudy size this is size of stills 12 megapixel 8 megapixel 6 megapixel oh I should say actually of course obviously the way you actually do this you scroll up and down set it to what you want and press OK on the top again this is for burst photography where you can have 11 frames in one second interval that is for periodic photographing ISO is film speed auto or 100 or 400 sharpness high medium low color balance vivid or standard date stamp on or off TV mode and Wi-Fi on or off. I think I mentioned that you can connect this to a phone or tablet using the Wi-Fi. Um, they do mention an app. I found Final Cam worked very well with it actually and I'm sure you'd probably find others that are compatible. USB is whether or not it turns on or off when you connect the USB lead so that if you were using as a car cam it would turn on when you turn the ignition on. Angle large middle small that is the field of view format the card and default would return it to factory settings software version and back to size which is video as I say you can just scroll through the options back to that press the button on the front we are press the button on the front and you switch from stills and that means I've got capacity for 4,866 at 12 megapixels with 32 gig card that I'm using. Press it again, I'm in video mode. And obviously to fire the shutter, press that and now we're recording. Blue lights are flashing to show that it's recording. And that was it, and there's the time on the front, it's 2200. OK, let's see how we use the Wi-Fi on this. Turn on. Scroll through the menu until you've got the Wi-Fi symbol up. Which is now. Turn Wi-Fi on. You can't see what I'm doing here. Turn the Wi-Fi on. On. Go into settings. Make sure your Wi-Fi is on, which it is. Press Wi-Fi. Firefly has come up. The default password is 12345678. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Finished. Go. Connect. Connecting. Connected. Home. As I mentioned, Final Cam works fine with this. It doesn't want to be that way up, it wants to be this way up, which doesn't help. Firefly. Oh, now it does want to be this way up. Okay, um, and as you can see, the tablet is now looking at whatever my camera is looking at. camera is looking at the video camera here we are and what does the app do this particular app I can go I can change settings 
sorry it keeps going sideways bit of an inconvenience back loading mm, okay go back into that again change settings I can download videos like so I can change wide dynamic range wide dynamic range off or on I can start this video recording remotely with this blue light flashing there you go started and so on but um, different apps will do different things but as I say this one I'm looking at here is final cam which works with this And this is 1080 wide. And this is 1080 medium. And this is 1080 small.
next to it, not the one behind it. See you. Keep it flying, keep it flying, keep it flying. Okay, my conclusions about the Firefly 5S. Nicely made little camera, well thought out, easy to use, and an intuitive menu and a host of good features. With the Sony 12 megapixel backlit CMOS, it's capable of some very good video results. It has a very useful Wi-Fi connectivity. Nice that you can actually see when the thing's working. Quite a few of these kind of cameras don't actually let you see when they're running. But this one has this very easy to see blue flashing light to tell you that you are actually recording. It is primarily designed for quadcopter use and it's a GoPro 3 clone and will fit the GoPro accessories and the gimbals on quads designed for GoPros. Shame it doesn't come with any accessories but it's so small and easy to mount you could velcro it onto a paragliding helmet or motorcycle helmet so I don't really see that that's a huge problem. And as I say, it is compatible with GoPro 3 and some of the SJ cam accessories. So, all in all, a good little camera and at a very good price. So there it is, the Firefly 5S.